<laughs> I want to start by saying that by all accounts, I shouldn't be standing here before you today. See, I was born in a country called, in Africa called Zambia, where at the time of my birth, 70% of the country lived below the poverty line. The country had reached peak unemployment rates, and the average life expectancy was just 44 years old. Things in Zambia have gotten a lot better since then, but I entered into a world where, from the moment I was born, the odds were stacked against me, my brother, and my sister. So when I was four years old, my parents decided to move us to a bordering country uh, called Botswana, all in pursuit of better circumstances for our family. But that turned out to be a false start because we struggled so much with this move that a few months later, with little money and no home, we had to turn around and go back to Zambia while my dad stayed behind trying to figure out a way for us to stay there. Then we tried again a few months later, but this time we managed to stay. And we lived in Botswana for nine years, constantly moving from place to place and school to school, always trying to improve our circumstances. But still, even then, opportunities were few and far between. Then my mom, who is a nurse, got an opportunity of a lifetime. She got the opportunity to come and work here for two years before us. And as much as she didn't want to leave her young family, we all knew she had to take it. And just as my mom was about to leave, my little sister, who's here in the crowd today, uh, got really ill. I think she was about six years old at the time, and she got uh, ill with a disease that puffed up her face and kind of disfigured it a little. And yet, with a heavy heart, my mom still had to leave her family and her sick daughter because we only had one shot at this opportunity, and it was an opportunity we simply couldn't afford to miss. I'm sure the parents here can appreciate just how heart-wrenching of a decision this was for my mother. She would let her tell us that she cried on the plane and every day for a month when she got here. My dad also had to sacrifice his career because his qualifications and experience simply would not translate to here. So I say this to say this was no small decision. Just to come here meant everything to us. But in order for us to make this move, uh, we had to make some changes back at home. At the time, we lived in a city, but as soon as my mom left, we had to move 50 kilometers out into a village called Kamaka. It was literally in the middle of nowhere. There we lived in a house with no ceilings, no paint on the walls, makeshift electricity, and water that came out of the tap round and undrinkable. I tell you all this to paint a picture of the environment I lived in just before we came here. Because when we finally made it to the UK, from the moment my feet touched the ground, I knew very deeply that I had a once in a lifetime opportunity for someone like me to make something of himself. And I wasn't gonna let anything stand in my way. We had traveled too far. So when I came to the school, it was my first obstacle. I struggled a bit at the start as I adjusted to this new world that I was in, but by the end of my time here, I left with the highest grades in my year. And I promise you it's not because I'm super smart or that I like school at all. I was never the kid answering all the questions in class. I would usually just sit silent most of the time because I had no idea what was going on. But I just knew that I had a once in a lifetime opportunity to make something of myself. So I worked like my life depended on it because in a way, it really did. And so by the time I reached A level, I asked myself, how much further can I take this? What is the biggest goal I can set for myself at the time? So one day I just Google searched best university in the world. The first ranking I saw for Cambridge right at the very top, so immediately I set that as my next goal. I managed to get an interview, and for three months before it, I woke up every morning and practiced in the mirror exactly what I was gonna say, what words I was gonna use, and where I was gonna look. I was leaving nothing to chance. I had my interview, and I actually didn't get in. I got what they call pooled, which is essentially like a soft rejection, which, in which they think you're good enough, but other candidates, and other candidates perform better, and only if you're lucky do you actually get in off a pool. And even then, you have to kind of do the whole process again. But this is where the amount of work and hustle you put forward in life makes all the difference. Because the summer before, I'd actually talked myself into a summer school at Cambridge that I wasn't even invited to. Only 24 places for students in the country, and I talked my way in. And in there, I made a point to talk to everyone and sell myself, basically, to everyone that I talked to. And while I was there, I'd met a random man in the room with whom I had one of these conversations with. Later, it turned out that that random man was the head of admissions for engineering at Cambridge. And when he heard I was pulled, personally recommended me for admissions to my director of studies. And just like that, I'd made it from a village to the same university as Stephen Hawking. Awesome. <laughs> And again, I ain't no genius. I can barely do mental math. I just work 
like a maniac. So I got to Cambridge, and after just one term there, my mind was already thinking, how much further can I take this off? That's around the time I started to teach myself how to code. And so, to cut a long story short, in my second year of university, I started a software company. Sleeping two to three hours a night, I was determined to make it work before I graduated. I never had any ambitions to work for anyone else. To cut another long story short, after many sleepless nights and sacrifice, slowly my business began to pick up speed. And then very quickly, a lot of things began to happen where my life felt like I was living in a movie. In 2014, I was featured by the Business Insider as one of 16 incredibly impressive students at Cambridge University. In 2015, I was flown out to Turkey to speak at an economic summit on national television with CEOs and world leaders. I then kept winning award after award, sending me to places like the Houses of Commons and Silicon Valley in California. I've also been, since been featured in The Guardian, Channel 4, BBC Radio, The London Evening Standard, and more. But the craziest for me is when the largest newspaper in Zambia, where I'm from, picked up my story and published a full-page article. This was insane because I started getting letters from kids from where I'm from saying they were inspired by my story. And today, because of the way I run my company, I can be anywhere in the world and still keep things running. So I spent most of last year traveling all around the world to 14 different countries. I rode on horseback up Mount Vesuvius in Italy, camped out with a Bedouin tribe in the Sahara Desert, explored the caves beneath Budapest, and walked across the ocean floor in Indonesia. And as long as I had a laptop and a Wi-Fi connection, my business kept running and growing. Freedom. As he mentioned, I actually spent the first few weeks, few days of this week in Portugal and flew in just for this tour. Because this is the school where my story began. Where, where, where after my parents had done their part in getting us here, like a relay race, it was my turn to run, as hard as I can. So I say to you, on your marks, get set, and go. There's nothing in this world that is out of your reach. There's nothing in this world that you cannot do. No dream too big or distance too far. Take this from me, my bro, and my sis, who look no different than the kids you see on the sponsored child charity adverts. I'm sorry. Now my sister's about to graduate with the first class degree in pharmacy and wants to do her master's. My brother has a master's and is about to complete his PhD in molecular biology. And I'm a Cambridge University graduate who runs his own software company and gets to travel the world whenever I feel like it. We all came to this school, straight out of Africa, with nothing but our dreams. There are no limits to what you can accomplish if you just realize the opportunity you have just by being here today. If you put 100% into everything that you do, your world will open up in ways that you never thought was possible. Things will begin to happen for you that will feel like you're living in a movie. But to get there, I need you to be unstoppable. Don't let anyone tell you what you can and cannot do. Don't let where you're from dictate where you think you can get to. No matter who you are, no matter what you think you're capable of, I promise you that you're capable of so much more. You already have everything within you that you need to be great. Don't let anyone tell you that you are less than what you are. You are enough. Again, I should not be here today. Whatever statistic you look at, whether it's how many African boys make it to the age of 25 healthy and alive, to how many people of my background get into a place like Cambridge, to how many people succeed in business, the odds have always been against me. So whatever excuse you may have about why you can't be great, I don't buy it. I don't. And it's not about being super smart or super lucky. It's about how much work you're willing to put forward to see everything you ever dreamed of come to life right before your eyes. And that's not up to your teachers, that's not up to your friends and not up to your parents. That's up to you. Thank you. <laughs>